Sure. Um, and then last year when we came out with Cedar, uh, when it came out in beta, they got it. We had multi-platform support. Um, but you know, these people still weren't happy. Uh, they wanted even more things, right? <laughs> Can't just have five languages. So, but like, how, how, how do we get this all to happen? Um, so the answer to this is Heroku Build Packs, which has been something we've been working on uh, since the advent of Cedar um, and trying to tweeze things out of, I guess, making it Ruby specific and building the Cedar stack. Um, so what Heroku Build Packs allow you to do is they essentially allow you to run anything on Heroku. So the Cedar stack is language independent, which means the runtime itself is not coded to work with any specific language. So it's not built specifically for Ruby, for Python, or any of these other languages. Even um, like even though we support Node and other things, like this stuff isn't necessarily on the runtime itself. Um, so let's take a step back and sort of look at how this works with the platform. So you have your application, uh, like a Ruby application probably, Rails or something. Um, and then the build pack, essentially what it does, it handles the language specific components um, during the build phase. So the Heroku runtimes don't have to know anything about the language itself, which is the build pack handles all that and it's good to go and it's ready to run. So you, this is the same for Ruby, for Node, for Clojure. Um, it sets it all up so it's ready to go when Heroku actually runs it. It doesn't need to know what kind of language it's running. So let's take a quick sort of look at how we push a sample Rails app onto Heroku and sort of what Heroku does here uh, with the build pack itself. So I'm sure you're all familiar if you've used Heroku at all, you do git push Heroku master. Um, and then Heroku has these git proxies um, that evoke this thing called slug compiler that receives the code. And uh, slug compiler, uh, has to do stuff to select which build pack it's going to use. So when you push stuff up, uh, Heroku needs to figure out what kind of what language you're using. So inside the build pack itself, there's a script called detect. And what this does here is it actually figures out uh, what language you're using. Um, so in the case of Ruby, we check to see if there's a gem file there, because most Ruby applications are going to be using Bundler, have a gem file for dependency management. So when you do git push Heroku master, uh, you see down here, like it detects Ruby and Rails app is detected. So we detect the gem file, we check that uh, for Rails 3 that the conf application RB is there and that the Rails application <coughs> constant is actually defined. Um, and then the next phase, after we know what kind of app you're running, uh, we need to do this compile step, which is essentially the whole build step inside of the build pack. So setting up the whole application to get it ready to run on the runtime itself. So the runtime doesn't have to know, doesn't have to have the run, uh, like Ruby installed on the runtime. Um, so we set up Bundler, we run Bundler set the dependencies, we set up Ruby, uh, install Ruby 193 if you specified that, uh, set up the database file uh, for Rails, and then run the famous assets precompile task. And then you're sort of good to go. And then the final step is sort of this release phase, which is all the metadata information that isn't contained in the final slug of the application that we're building. And so th what this does is it allows you to specify the different process. It sets up all the process types you're running. So if you have a worker, you define it in your proc file, and then we set it up here and send it to our core application so we know what process types are running. Um, so if you don't specify anything, by default we set up a web process rake and a console and then we actually just launch your slug into production. And so after all that, you're sort of just done. Um, your app's up and running and you're good to go. Um, so, but, you know, I, I talked about how this is Heroku for everything and, you know, just pushing Rails apps is sort of boring. So, how, how do we run something else? So, Keith Rarick at Heroku uh, built a Go language pack um, that is similar to the Ruby one but sets everything up for Go. So, when you run Heroku create, you can, there's this build pack flag and you can specify any Git repo uh, as a, a GitHub URL or as a URL and pass that in. And as long as you have those detect, compile, and release scripts, uh, it'll be good to go. 
So after that, we see we get a URL from Heroku, and then you can check the configuration variable and see that this build pack URL configuration is set, uh, which should be the URL that you set before. And so finally, you do a push, and then you see this line that we fetched this custom build pack. And if it successfully fetches it, um, then it says done, and it goes through the normal push process that we saw before that's specific to that build pack itself. Um, so now that you know how to set all like different build packs and use them, like where do we find work, uh, build packs that already exist? So on Dev Center, Heroku supports these build packs officially. Uh, so these are the ones that get set up normally when you just get push Heroku Master. These are the build packs that we go through. So you know, there's Ruby, Node, Clojure, Python. Java, and then a bunch of other Java-related ones. So like the main Java one uses Maven, and then there's Gradle, Grail, Scala, and Play as well. Um, but the really interesting stuff is that uh, since we've been working with build packs and have been seeding it out to the community, a ton of other people have created their own custom build packs to add support for other things. Uh, like Go earlier, uh, one of my coworkers created like an Emacs build pack. Um, <laughs> You know, there's this page is actually pretty long, so if you search for this on Dev Center, I don't know how many there are there, but there's like 40 or 50, I think. So there's a pretty long list of stuff that people have made. Um, and you know, if you can't find what you're looking for, you can make your own build pack. And so, you know, you're sort of wondering like, what would I do? So you know, the obvious thing is like add support for extra languages. So someone created a Go build pack. Someone had one added like mono support uh, for running .NET stuff. Um, or like something you might want to do is if Heroku doesn't have a custom binary that you want to use, you can, instead of venturing it into your app itself and sort of bloating the Git repo, you can put this into a build pack. And so have the build pack vendor that binary into the slug every time. And so it doesn't really mess with your code. Um, so you can keep your code clean. Um, another kind of example would be, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have looked at Jekyll that was done by GitHub. Um, so, you know, it's just a static blog um, that has markdown and stuff. And potentially you'd want to build static assets for that um, on deploy and not check those in to have them deployed by Heroku. So you can modify the build process to have that generate those static files during the build process and then insert them into the slug so you don't have to keep track of that, worrying about caching and sort of dealing with all that stuff. And then you can sort of just go crazy and build really fun things. Um, so when we first started building build packs, uh, Craig Kirstein, one of my coworkers, came up with this really awesome idea. Uh, he said, why don't we build a build pack that runs NES ROMs, right? Like, let's run NES ROMs on Heroku. So if you go to jsnes.herokuapp.com, you can actually play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the first one from uh, Nintendo. Uh, and what this does is essentially you just have an empty repo. You put in an NES ROM. You specify the build pack, uh, the custom build pack for this, and then you push it up to Heroku, and you get a Heroku app that plays that Nintendo ROM. Uh, so you know you can really do a lot of pretty neat stuff with build packs, uh, so they don't have to all be serious in business. So now that like you've seen what you can do with them, uh, like some ideas, like maybe you're thinking of like, how do I build a build pack uh, for myself, right? So the easiest thing is to fork an existing one. So all of our build packs that we've built are open source under the Heroku repo. You can search for Heroku dash build pack dash whatever the build pack. So for Ruby, it's dash Ruby. And uh, you fork it, add to it, um, and then you can specify that for the build pack URL. And for adding custom binaries that I talked about before, uh, we have a build service called Vulkan. So there's this gem called Vulkan that you can use, and essentially it, it creates a Heroku app, and then you pass the it uploads the source of the binary you're trying to build, and you pass sort of the build command you want to use, and then it builds it against Heroku on the Heroku app, and then you download the tar, and you can set that up and put that into your build pack. Um, and then another thing that we've been working on is sort of improving the development process locally. So we've been working on this service called Anvil, and it allows you to run the build packs uh, without having to push every time to Heroku. 
Um, so you don't have to keep doing like empty commits and pushing it to Heroku to test certain changes. So you can use something like Anvil. Um, and if you Google for Heroku Anvil, you'll find it um, on GitHub. Uh, so sort of in short summary, build packs are pretty flexible, transparent, customizable. Um, they allow you to run pretty much anything on Heroku that you can think of. Um, you just have to get it to work. And you should go out and make your own. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Yep. So you guys have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You guys have Contra? Uh, I have not put up Contra, but I mean, you could totally, if you have a legit version of Contra and you put it in a. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Terrence. Thanks.